This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be talking to Laura Yerstein Lenoyle. This is a rare exclusive to end the month of June summer. She was Robin in Back to the Beach, which is celebrating its fifth its 35th anniversary. She will be my second guest from that movie. She was also in O.C. and Stiggs, playing John Cryer's sister. She was in Once Bitten, playing one of Karen Copin's friends. And then uh, she got out of the business, going to find out uh, what she's been doing uh, lately. I hope she um, is doing theater. I hope she comes back to acting. She had a great personality. And um, Susan DeManti um, connected us, and it's going to be a great conversation today. I cannot wait. Let's kick off. Let's let's you know go out with a bang and kick off you know Independent Summer, Independent July next month with the last interview for June. So yeah, here is my interview with Laura Yerstein Lenoyle. Hi. Hey, Laura. Welcome to the show. How are you today? I am well. Thank you, Tommy, for inviting me to the party. My pleasure. This is such a great honor. Thank you for taking the time today. You're welcome. So going back in time, uh, did you gravitate toward Not acting? Far back in time. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> okay. Go- going back in time, did you gravitate toward acting early on in your childhood? Yes, I did. When um, when all the other kids were playing teacher and mom and all the other things I would play, I would play actress and singer. So yes, from really young age. Yeah. And so did you do a lot of school plays at community theater? I did. I did every school play I could in elementary school, and then in high school I did not. I I didn't get I didn't get chosen to do any plays in high school. Very few. But I, that's when I branched out and I started doing community and then professional theater, like right in high school, which was really interesting. That kind of propelled me into becoming more professional, maybe than I even would have been. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like rejection, kind of, you can do one of two things, you know, you can take that as, no, I'm not good enough, or I'm going to show them. <laughs> so, kind of showed them, showed myself. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're, uh, where are you from originally? I am from Los Angeles. I'm one of the unicorn people. Oh, nice. I, I didn't know if you. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know if you were from New York or not. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So after high school, did you attend college? I did. I, it was kind of a, a funny thing. I I had really good grades, but I was not planning on going to college. And my family decided that's when they were going to move. So we moved from Torrance by the beach to mm-hmm. uh, Canoke Park, West Hills area, and we were driving to look at the new house. And we were in the car and passed some letters, like a sculpture, C-S-U-N. Mm-hmm. My sister, who was like, she was about seven at the time, said, can we please go climb in those? And that was the Sun Cal State University, Northridge. And three weeks later, I was going to college. Wow. That's <laughs> right? Yeah. Did you study acting there? I studied acting, um, and I did a lot of shows there, but I majored in psychology. Nice. Which is kind of the same <laughs> in many ways. Yeah. Were you, were you on the trajectory of maybe doing something with the psychology degree? Yes and no. It was always so interesting, and I love learning and love people, but I think the psychology aspect of it it helped me more with the acting and um, kind of allowed me to, to go deeper into who I was and who characters were, mm-hmm. I think. But yeah, and then I, I taught, I teach. So I think I had a, a real um, affinity working with kids. So I had a lot of child development uh, classes and a lot of information dealing with that. Nice. When you, when you were uh, doing the acting, though, did any of your classmates go on to become successful at acting? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I ask it all the time. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Well, 
Well, um, I'm married to a puppeteer, and he works with the Muppets, and I met him at Cal State Northridge. So, yes, let's go with that. Nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so after that, um, so you, you started you started working, you made your television debut on Hello, Larry. Oh, my gosh, you so did your homework, Tommy, yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I do. <laughs> and I worked with Joey Travolta. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. I interviewed his nephew a couple of years ago, Tom Fridley. Um, what, what, wow. What do you remember about Joey? I remember he was very cute. <laughs> was really cute. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've I've talked to uh, Krista Erickson, who played Diane. Um, mm-hmm. She was reluctant to do the show because, you know, she was uh, Elliot Kazan's goddaughter and she was in that New York method state of mind and she thought it was a sellout to go to L.A. and be on a sitcom, you know? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The things we think, right? Yeah. The things we tell ourselves and the things we think, yeah. I've, I've talked to quite a few people who felt that way about about uh, sitcoms back then and just TV in general, but now it's different because, you know, everybody's on TV or streaming and doing movies now. It is so different, yes. So different. Mm-hmm. I, I heard uh, McLean Stevenson was just like his persona, and he was kind of uh, grumpy, was he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, they were lovely. It was like coming into... To this lovely family, and they were really welcoming, as I recall, and just kind. And and it was a really sweet experience. It was like it was a whole week, as I remember. It wasn't just a day or two. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, because you gotta do the, you got you gotta do the uh, table readings and the rehearsals and yeah, the changes. Yeah, we do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there was yeah, to experience that for the first time. Very fun. Yeah, and another one I noticed who was in that was George Jetson's son, George O'Hanlon Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's me, George Jetson. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this boy that is so cool. So, you're my third guest from OC and Stiggs. No, who else did you get? I've talked to um, the two hooker looking teenage girls, uh, Tiffany Helm and Dana Anderson. Which one? Dana Anderson. Yeah. Oh, yes. D- Dana yes. is is a, is a unique ball of energy, and she is so fun. <laughs> oh, I would love to reconnect with her. Yes. Yeah, she's on my Facebook. Oh, okay. I'll look you up. I'll look her up. Yes. Yes. Um, oh my God, there's a story I wish I could tell you. I'll I'll, I'll tell you on, on Facebook. She told me a really funny story uh, about Tiffany. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that, that Tiffany's a friend also, and yeah, they're both awesome. Um, was that just a standard audition for you? That was a crazy audition. I went, uh, I went down to Santa Monica to a hotel mm-hmm. near the beach. I don't even remember though. Maybe the Miramar. Anyway, I had to go up to this hotel room. I mean, why did I even do that? But I went to a hotel room and knocked on the door, and there was Robert Altman, who I didn't even know. I didn't know who he was or what he did. And um, his partner, Scotty, she was there. And I believe a couple other people, and I did some improv, and it was really silly. And the next thing I know, I was jumping on my couch because I got a part in a film. And not even realizing it was a Robert Altman film. Mm-hmm. People had to tell me. And then he invited me to a screening of something that he had just produced. And it was it was just amazing from there on. He, he was everything that an actor would dream of wanting to work with. There was so much yeah. trust in what he... What, what he knew was going to be right. I mean, he would just come and whisper something in your ear, and, and there it was. And there was always a script, but of course, we always went off script. And that was probably one of the best experiences that I have had as an actor. The, the, just everything about it. Oh, everybody I've talked to said that he was very collaborative. He loved hearing other people's ideas. There was no ego there, you know. Uh, just he was a, he was a, he was an actor's dream, is what he was. He 
he was involved, and there was so much kindness. I, I remember, um, I was like, like the, the fledgling actor I was. Mm -hmm. um, I was Mike, and didn't really know what that exactly. And we were doing an ice cream scene next, and I was saying to somebody, because I am uh, violently allergic to peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I can tell anybody that. I hope it's not real ice cream, and if it's peanut butter, I, I, I don't know what I can and anyway, like five minutes later, he goes, okay, Laura, you're going to have peanut butter ice cream. And I went, oh, my God. And the tears started coming to my eyes. And he's like, no. <laughs> and he had heard everything I said. Oh, yeah. I, I love peanut butter. I actually have to eat the all-natural one now because I have diabetes, and there's no sugar in that one. I, uh, you know, you yeah. know, that could kill me. Like, I walk through the market and go, that could kill me, that could kill me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. If, I, if I open that little product, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know it's sad. Um, how was working with John Cryer? Oh, silly. Yeah. So much fun. He picked me up from the airport one day when I guess when I arrived in Arizona. There he was, and we we had fun. Um, I got married in the movie and in the wedding dress. Yeah. He threw. What did they throw? It was like onion dip. Yes. The wedding dress, like for bird poop. And it was the silliest, most wonderful thing. And then later I got married in the West, very same wedding dress. So I, that was very cool. I remember the exchange you and Jane Curtin had. Lenore, you got spots on your dress. And you're like, yeah. Mom, it's Swiss. She says, Swiss my ass, it's bird shit. Yeah. <laughs> and that was total improv. Yes, and she, she was just the best. Oh yeah. I was like working with a master. Yeah, she's she's one of the early Saturday Night Live people. She's got to be the best, you know. Call me that lady, yes. Yeah, she was just so professional, but so so kind. I hung out a lot with her. Her sister was there at the time, and we hung out together at the pool, covered up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he looked at my <laughs> he looked at my cap, and she goes, "Yep." We're related. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you got big white cows. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love very it. Silly. Like, you're bringing up some very silly memories. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> Paul Dooley, he says you look expensive. <laughs> uh, love Paul Dooley. Love him. Yeah. He, oh, my gosh. Sweet, man. I, um... A couple of years ago, he did a one-man show about his life, and I went, um, and afterward, I, I stayed and I talked to him for a little while, and that was just wonderful. Oh, yeah. He's still kicking, still out there. Still kicking. Yes. Yeah. What a, what a wonderful actor. How, how about um, the, the two leads? There was Neil Barry, and what was the other guy's name? Um, Dan Jenkins. Right. <laughs> That's impressive to remember. They were fun. And Cynthia Nixon. Yes. Oh, yeah, we there, shared a suite. Cynthia there, Nixon and I. There, there was some high-priced talent in here. There was uh, Tina Louise, who was oh. Ginger on Gilligan's Island. There was yes. Martin Mould, Dennis Hopper, Ray Walston. God. Martin Mould was, what was he called? The coolest adult ever. I think that was the title of his character. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There were so many people coming in and out. That was an amazing moment, yeah. Everybody just wanted to work with Robert Altman for good reason. I mean, everybody just said yes because he was just that amazingly open, lovely man. Yeah, Cynthia Nixon, She was. I think she had just done Amadeus or she was about to or yes. something. Yes, because you know what? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, she's like, I'm doing this little play later. <laughs> Oh, yeah. In this little theater called Circle is a Square. And I'm like, oh, that's so fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, she was very sweet. Oh, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. How how do you get cast in Once Bitten? Uh, yeah, I had like five auditions for the lead. And then in the end, it was down to three people. And the two of us that didn't get it, they gave us those other little parts, which was wonderful and fun. But that was a very long, long audition process. 
just for that one scene where you had lines? <laughs> you know, yeah, right? I had, like, two lines. Yeah, because we were, all three of us, I guess, were up, were up for the part. Yeah. And then and it was lovely of them to say, well, sorry, you didn't get that, but hey, how about a couple days for it? So, yes, and thank you. Yeah, let's see. I've talked to Skip Lackey, Stu Charno, um, Kimberly Gold, who was in the band on stage at the Halloween dance. She had some great stories. Oh, yes. Yeah, she had some great stories. Um, the other um, person who I was, Susan Ursetti, I think her name might have been. Which one? She was the other, um, she was like my friend when we, we had the one scene. Oh, it was Megan Mullally. Oh, Yeah. That's so weird. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, who did the scene? Um, the other like person who had a line. She. Oh yeah. She. Um. There was that exchange there where. Um, you know, you're like, I love a sensitive man who's not afraid to cry on your shoulder, and she <laughs> said, "Oh, that's absolutely hilarious," or something like that. <laughs> that is so funny. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so corrected. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've been trying to get Karen Copen's attention on social media, and I just can't get, uh, get through to her. I, I hope I do though, because she was a huge okay. she was a huge part of my childhood. I love that. Yeah. Well Jim Carrey. Oh, oh my God, he was you know at the comedy store at that time and doing his impressions on stage and his funny faces, and. Yeah. He, he I, I've, I've always heard good things about him. Very welcoming. Really, really welcoming. Yeah. I yeah. remember he, he said something like, um, I'm so glad you're here. We're getting so bored with each other. And it was just a very sweet thing. Yeah. It was lovely. Yeah, his, you know, I saw this movie for the first time when I was like four or five, and his face scared me, right? So... <laughs> I avoided the movie for about seven years until um, he became famous, and then I watched it, and I've been obsessed with it ever since. I love the movie. That's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I remember you, you, you think his hair, his hair is weird, and like uh, Karen tells him that he looks like Jerry Lewis, and, he's, and he does the Robert De Niro face and says, I thought I looked more like De Niro, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember anything about the the director Howard Storm? No, very little. I just remember every, every, that was a very also a very welcoming set. I've been really lucky in, yeah. in the, the things that I've done. Mm-hmm. Really, very few really bad experiences, and I blocked them out, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, let me tell you what. Uh huh. There, um, th- there's a uh, a once bitten fan site, and there's a lot of great information on it. Um, really? Yeah. yeah. So, before Karen Copens was cast, they wanted Deborah Foreman because she was coming off of Valley Girl. But the reason why Karen got the role was because she did a, a great line reading of the the line that probably people still quote to her to this day. You know, Mark doesn't want you. He wants me because I'm sweet and innocent and pure. So fuck off. <laughs> that says so much, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 I love that. I've had some weird encounters with uh, Deborah Foreman, so I can say Karen Copens was a better choice. <laughs> okay. I'll trust you on that, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, the funny scene where Jim Carrey goes into the confession and uh, the homeless guy is in there and he tells him to get a, sh- a shovel because he's in deep shit, you know, after the, the confession, he tells him. Originally, that line was, hey, do you have any toilet paper on your side? Because he was he, he was taking a dump in the confession, and they were afraid that the Catholic League was going to come after them for that joke. So the line was overdubbed with "Get yourself a shovel, you're in deep shit." And then wow. years later, Beavis and Butthead did that joke. <laughs> That's very funny. That's the ironic part. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Right? And I'm sure they got hate mail for that. I'm sure they That's did. <laughs> of course. That's funny. Yeah. It is, it's crazy how things work out that way. 
Then comes Back to the Beach. How do you get cast in that? That was a pretty standard audition. I know that there was a callback and there was mm-hmm. an audition. And it was like, I think, you know, it was one of those things where somehow, some way, I saw the breakdown and yeah. not the agent. And I think I submitted myself somehow. I don't even remember how. But it was the part of an artist and the best friend and quirky and, and all the things that probably still am. I'm definitely an artist, but probably, you know, it was a very quirky, goofy, wonderful role. Yeah. And um, it was just, uh, just it seemed like it, it was something that I kind of manifested, if you believe in all of that. Yeah. And, and it happened, and there it was. I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a Bay Area guy, so, like, I, I grew up going to Santa Cruz, you know, all the time. I miss, oh, I miss yeah. going there. Yeah, it, it, I, I, I did the math. This movie was being shot simultaneously as Killer Clowns from Outer Space in, Sa- in Santa Cruz. <laughs> they were being shot in February to March of 87. Yeah, yeah. Was, what, was it freezing cold there? It was so cold. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Crazy, ridiculous. But luckily for me, mm-hmm. <laughs> I got to wear like um, leopard jackets and heavy, heavy things because <laughs> my character was like not bikini girl. I was moo-moos and leopard jacket, so <laughs> I wasn't as cold as other people might have been. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I can confirm that cold weather over there <laughs> in the winter oh, time. My. Yeah. We rented this yeah. movie. We rented this movie when I was five. Um, it had just come out on video, and we rented the movie and got Kentucky Fried Chicken for dinner. And <laughs> we've loved the movie ever since. When we didn't have Showtime back then, the movie was on Showtime because it was in the first run contract, you know. Right. So, yes. So by '92, um, HBO was showing the Paramount movies that they couldn't show for years before that, and so it was on all the time, and we were watching it and, and laughing and all the stuff, you know. And what what I love about the movie is that you know it's the it's the first and only time we get to see Frankie and Annette be edgy. <laughs> right, and they were. I remember something about the movie that that I'll share with you, and it was really interesting. Um, okay. Right about that time, Annette had been diagnosed with MS, right? Yes. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Um, I didn't know. And she was lovely. Like, she let me go into her, her big motor home. And yeah. I had this little, tiny little box, but it was so cold and freezing. She said, come on in, have popcorn. Yeah. And we hung out a lot. And anyway, um, we were doing ska, the ska, Jamaica ska. Right. And um, she fell. And... I watched Frankie, like, fly. Literally, he flew to help her up. Yeah. He just tripped on something. And he was, they were so lovely and so close. And yeah. he knew that she had just been diagnosed. Oh, my God. And, like, thinking back to it, it, it was maybe a year later, maybe longer, I don't know the time limit, but, you know, she, she went with it. And I thought back to that moment. And yes, and he stood close to her, very close, you know, the rest of the time. And she was a trooper. She was just amazing and just went on. People trip, okay? You know, I'm fine, let's go on. But that had to have been why she had started probably to lose her balance then. So interesting. Yeah, I, I I remember watching the A and E biography about her, and they mentioned that during the Jamaica ska, you know, she was feeling dizzy, and you know, all, and you know, they, they they turned it into humor, saying, "Oh, the old legs ain't what they used to be," you know, and stuff, and all of that. But yeah, it was it was pretty sad. It, it took about maybe four more years before though that she had to start uh, being in the wheelchair, you know, because they did the tour. She was amazing. She was like, like this regular person. She was just, she drove carpool for her kids. And, yeah. You know, she went to PTA, meaning she was, she was all that you saw. Yeah. Funny. And lovely and goofy and a good friend. She was just, oh, like a gift, really. She was so talented, yeah. Oh, right? 
very talented. He taught me how to eat popcorn, which would be with olive oil and pepper. I, I've I've heard people uh, talk about eating it that way. I'm I'm I'm, I'm closed minded. I can't. I, I mean, I'm I'm open minded, but I'm closed minded to try it that way. <laughs> I love my I love I just love my old fashioned butter. That's all I need. Oh, well, there you go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're my um, second guest from this movie. I talked to Linda Carroll, who played the blonde bimbo Bridget. Oh yeah. Yeah, she almost kissed um, Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to be in a movie. You got to be in a movie with Ginger, then a movie with Gilligan and Skipper. I was just thinking of that. Yeah. Hey, how lucky was I? How you were lucky. very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to interview David Bowe, and I tried to interview Damien Slade. They were both negative experiences. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I think though that Damien Slade steals the movie. You know, um, uh, I I had heard that they wanted uh, Manette's son originally, but he was too sweet. But at least Damien Slade got to balance it between being sweet and being, you know, sarcastic, funny. Yes. Is he still acting? Damien Slade. Yeah. I don't think I don't think he is. He might. I don't know. But he's gone off the deep end. I I I had a almost stalking experience with him. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And he, you, you weren't stalking. <laughs> he was stalking me. He was practically stalking me. Like I had, oh. you know, asked him a few times to do the podcast, right? And he told me to reach out to him at this time, and I did. And then he told me that he wasn't going to do a podcast. And then next thing you know, I'm getting all these notifications on LinkedIn that he's like viewing my profile. It was weird, so I had to block him. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> Linda, Linda told me though Annette was always eating peanut butter on set well, not around me thank goodness <laughs> no that's right yeah that's right I'm sorry I forgot about that that's right you, could, you couldn't confirm yeah. that yeah. Uh, Laurie Laughlin's so gorgeous uh, it's sad oh, about, about what happened with her um, yeah what was she like beautiful uh, sweet, kind. We hung out. You know, we were always there at the same time. Yeah. She she helped me a little bit. You know, she'd worked a lot more than I had. Yeah. At that point. And, and she, she knew exactly what she was doing. And she was so professional. Really. Very, very sweet. Yeah. Um, a nice time. It was a nice relationship. She she got uh, Frankie and Annette to be on Full House, just like uh, John John Stamos got the Beach Boys a couple times to be on Full House. It, it's funny how that worked. Right? Yes. Yes. How was uh, How was uh, Tommy Hinckley? Fun. Yeah. Fun. You know, it's so fun to work with people you know that are your age, and and we were all kind of starting out then. You know, nobody had done a whole lot, so it was just fun and silly and on the beach. It was, mm-hmm. it was good. It was a good time. And the director was, was wonderful. It was a good thing. Lyndall Hobbs, yeah, I reached out to her last year and I didn't hear back. Uh, you know, I wanted to talk about this and talk about, um, she did this, she was part of this, um, this concert movie that was pretty groundbreaking called Urge a Music War, where... Oh. All the punk and new wave bands from England and L.A. were at the Roxy doing this big show in 1980. Uh-huh. Everybody from the Police to Devo to Sting and the um, to uh, Oingo Boingo and the Circle Jerks and Echo and the Bunny Men they were all in that. It was like a it was like a new wave Woodstock. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. John uh, John Calvin was great as the uh, sleazy musclehead Troy. <laughs> He cracks yes. me. He cracks me up yes. when he does that laugh. Oh my gosh! Yes, now you make me want to watch it again. Yes, I love that. Uh huh. Yeah, him and the, the net are surfing, and he's like, you know, lifting up her skirt. <laughs> so funny. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I I like how they did. They didn't mind going over the edge without going too far, but doing it just enough. You know, less yes. is more. <laughs> the boundary of of too much. Yes. Yeah, they pushed it for that time. Absolutely. 
Yeah, Connie Stevens had that great line when, when her and Nett finally become friends. She says to her, you've wasted too many good years on those great tits. <laughs> <laughs> and then Annette does that look like, hmm, I guess you're right. <laughs> Yeah, she could say a lot with just a look, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a person who's very observant. When I, I always look at facial expressions when I'm watching movies, and, like, I, I'm very good at reading them. Like, oh, my God, okay, I've seen that look so many times before, I know exactly what that meant. Right. Do you ever turn off the sound and just watch? Because that's fun, too. I have done that um, in my younger years, but I, I, I prefer to hear the, the words now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm right there with you, yeah. Oh, yeah, I used to change the um, the color on the screen and make it black and white, and I was like, <laughs> this looks really funny. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I used to do that and then tape the movie, but the movie would come out in color. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Exactly, I didn't understand that. Yeah, I got to do that, so that's okay. <laughs> now, when you guys did that um, that Jamaica ska scene, I mean, was there a lot of rehearsal? You know, that's a good question. We and I was thinking about that before. Um, Lori and I went to his house one day. Yeah. And it was like so cool. And um, we had the choreographer came, and we spent an afternoon rehearsing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I'm sure you know we had a couple takes uh, a couple of rehearsals before, but then we just went for it. And then of course she fell, and that you know changed that part of it. But it was just fun and and goofy, and we we had a really sweet time. Yeah, a uh, fishbone. They're very underrated. They were like yeah. you know they were like top dogs in L.A. back then. Yeah, totally. Yes, but the same with um. You know, seeing Sticks, King Sunny Day. Yeah. Also overrated and, I mean, underrated and wonderful. <laughs> underrated, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Thunder, not over, because they were very cool. Fishbone was on double bills with the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers in those days. Wow. Wow. You know, that's also funny because I remember right when um, we were doing the Jamaica Ska, somebody said to me, okay, um, we're going to do this music video for MTV. Mm -hmm. And I what is what is MTV? What does that mean? What? Because that had just come out, and I had no idea what that even meant. And there we have it. <laughs> I'm weird. I know, right? Yeah. Um, were you there when uh, Pee Wee was doing Surfing Bird? I was so there. Yeah. It was so cold. It was freezing. Yeah. And he, he was very quiet. Oh, yeah. I met him uh, about three years ago. He was um, he, he was very soft-spoken, but he is the sweetest guy ever. Right? Yeah. Yes, he was lovely. I do remember that was one very long, very cold night. Yeah. Uh, it's the, it's the, uh -huh. Probably the only time Pee-wee in uniform ever swore when he's like, Bitchin'! <laughs> <laughs> For him, it was, yeah. Right? I, did you see uh, Dick Dale and Stevie Ray Vaughn do Pipeline? Yes. Yes. That, that, the energy must have been just fantastic, because that to me, that's the best rendition of the song. All of it was. And you're bringing back so many memories. Like, I remember where it was standing. Yes, yes all of it was just... Hmm really special. I don't know that I knew how special it was as it was happening. Yeah. You know, but in retrospect, wow. Wow. Yeah, and that version won a Grammy. Wow. It was huge. Yeah. How oh, was that? I love that song, um, Some Things Go On Forever. Um, you know, Frankie and Net used to do that on tour um, after this. And I love how the, the, the whole cast is like joining in and stuff. That 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 was a a, a really special version. I thought. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Absolutely. 
you you had that 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 line um, when uh, when uh, she says she says, "Do you know how to how to Jamaica ska?" And you said, "Oh yeah, Ned, it's a requirement at college." <laughs> yeah, right. I just saw that this morning. I was looking back at it. Yes. You yeah you were you know what you were perfect to be in this movie because you you have a a, a voice of a, of a girl who was in like the original beach party movies you know yeah yeah there was a lot I mean a lot of it a lot of what I did got cut but it, it was a lot of fun oh you you had stuff that was cut so much stuff yeah and you know and it, that's just what it was that that's where you learn okay that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you never get. You never get to see. Yeah. Showbiz. No, yeah. Yeah. I love when he's riding the surfboard and the, the Indiana Jones music is playing. And he's like, oh. you, you know, playing golf and like fixing his hair. And then he's like signing an autograph. <laughs> yes. Oh my yeah. God. That's hilarious. Really wonderful stuff. Yeah. That was hilarious. And you got Don Adams in there, you know, playing the captain. Yeah. You know? So interesting. I've been really lucky. That was just that was just an amazing a cast, you know, uh, you know, and um, you know, an assemble of, of, of people. Right? And every everybody said yes. And and once everybody was there it was just silly and wonderful and fun. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because I, I played an artist in, in back to beach and her best friend and and now that is kind of where my um where my interests are lying i started to paint and it's just kind of like everything comes full circle it's been really fun yeah uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that part but i was i was curious to know the guy who played the leader of the gang he died like a few years later of aids really yeah joe um let me look up his name here dad do you remember anything about him I remember... I, Joe Holland. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, actually, and I didn't have a lot to do with him, but I do remember like, hanging out, you know, on break. And he was very sweet, very kind, very very not like his role, right? Very, um, so sweet. I am so sorry to hear that. Yeah, he died in, like, 94 or something. Oh, very soon after. So young. Yeah, it is sad. Yeah. Oh, wow. Then, then you worked with um, Jackie Cooper on Cagney and Lacey. Oh, yes. I sure did. Yeah. So he came, he came to my dressing room to get me. Mm-hmm. And he could probably tell I was really nervous. And so he took my hand and we skipped to the set. Mm-hmm. I think we sang Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Yeah. So I got that I was no longer nervous because he was just just put me at ease. Just knew absolutely what to do. Mm-hmm. There, there it was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Art Matrano, he passed away recently. He's in that episode. Um, oh yes. The the very underrated, very funny Mark Blankfield. Ah uh, yes. And uh, Julie Bavasso, who always played like uh, a, a mafia's uh, a, a, maf- a mafia mother, you know, she was a very respected acting teacher in New York. I actually interviewed one of her students once. Hmm. Interesting. I saw also you interviewed Suze Lanier, who was an acting teacher of mine many years ago. Really? You you were trained by um, Susan? Uh, yeah, I listened to the um, part of the podcast morning and I thought wow I, I've done a, I've done a, a like four of them which one did you listen to um I guess probably the most recent the one where she she wasn't exactly sure what the podcast was going to be about or who was going to listen to it yeah because it had been a couple of years since our our, our last one it, <coughs> excuse me and she does so many of the interviews you know that you know she can't remember stuff you know from Shinola oh. sometimes so yeah but uh, every time she comes on here we have fun <laughs> so funny so talented yes yeah she's a special lady yeah. so did you did so, so so you said you got into art did you so then you just was like I- I'm done with this acting thing it's getting too hard no Mm-hmm. Um, all through my life, I, I was only, I was 
totally going to be an actress and I was going to be a mom and, and all the other things that there were in life. And then on the morning of my 30th birthday, yeah. on my way to my surprise party, which Steve Lanier was there, um, <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, I have to have a kid. Oh my gosh, I want this. I, I need this. I, I have to live. And um, when I was 31, my son was born. Mm. And I always thought that I would go back to acting then. And then I just wanted to be home and had a beautiful daughter, so I have two kids who are now old and grown, but um, everything changed at that time, and I really never thought it would. I would have put a lot of money on it not changing. And yeah. then I just finally said, you know, when I'm 50, I can pound the pavement again. I don't have to be there. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I was 50, and, it, and I thought, oh, 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 and went back little, like, like, a little while later, and and I'm I'm doing it, but there are so many other things that fill that need to create mm-hmm. moment because everything changed. I mean, the the social media, the technical aspect, just everything changed. Yeah. And while while the the art is still there, and the work is what's important, and that still in me and I still need to express it um, other things help fill that creative void because you probably know as a creative person if you don't create mm-hmm. uh, it, it's just it's not okay you know mm-hmm. there's just so much that you need to put out there so I found painting abstract painting about a year ago and it's just so much fun and I can do it whenever I want I don't have to wait for somebody to say hey read for this role and and there it is, and I'm I just love that there's somewhere, some way I can express all that crazy creative energy that just is there. Mm-hmm. I think I'm much easier to live with <laughs> now that I can, <laughs> I'm somewhere to put all that crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, you, you did come back with a few shorts, Late Great Mom and Transit. Yeah, so I wrote Late Great Mom. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of fun. And we won a lot of awards at uh, the film festival, and that that's just awesome. And I, I do commercials, and and I love it, and I love all of that. But it, it it's just it's different now. The age that I am, and the roles that are available, mm-hmm. um, few and far between, but that is important. And I'm just wondering. I don't know. Maybe in ten years or more, I'll be like, "Where's the beef lady?" I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying no to anything. However, I'm just just not sure exactly where where I fit in this whole thing right now. And and I'm a part of this wonderful acting group. And it's not like I said absolutely not never. Mm-hmm. I'm just not sure. Just kind of finding it, which is kind of exciting in and of itself. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, have you ever tried to get into voiceover? Because you d- definitely have the best voice for it. You know, that has been on my mind lately, too. Yeah, go for it. A, a new avenue to look at as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you have a great voice for voiceover. You know, you can do cartoons and anime and all that stuff. Right, right. Thank you. Maybe I will look into that. Absolutely. So what do you got going on these days? Any projects or anything? painting I do there's there's rules but you don't have to color in the lines so I am just having the greatest time just exploring um painting and um just kind of enjoying enjoying my life take a couple of acting classes I teach I teach kids and I do really (laughs) enjoy that Mm -hmm. really focus on um teaching them confidence more than anything oh we do a lot of improv but you know as an I was always a really shy kid, how, and then people say, and I'm a shy person now, an introvert, but people say, well, how can you, how can you get up in front of hundreds of people, and I said, because I'm not me, I'm somebody else, I have a different name, and I can do anything if I have a different name, and introducing myself is <laughs> the worst, hardest, like, strangulation feeling, however, I feel like if I can give the gift of being able to do that to a kid who's five, six, or ten, and they can just say, hi, my name is, they are 
they are so lucky. And if they can be confident and turn on their little confidence button that everybody has, you know, they're just one step ahead of the game. And that's really what it all boils down to. And I love being able to give that gift to all these little people. And, and that's kind of really me. So that's also what I'm doing and enjoying a lot. Oh, I love that. That that is so sweet. And you said uh, your your husband is a muppeteer. He is. He's working on. Uh, he's working today on the the Muppet something. It's a TV show, a series that's coming out. You know, I have interviewed a lot of the Canadian muppeteers, but like the American yeah. ones will not respond to me or come on here. It's it's really strange. You know what? I'm going to send you Bruce's information. Uh, when we hang up, I'll send it on um, Facebook to you. When you can look him up. Well, was he was, was well, well, was he around it back in the eighties? Oh yeah, he's done this uh, like for thirty years, and he's amazing, and he's talented and goofy and silly. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just yeah. It, it's it's strange, you know. Um, the, there was a there's a couple of um, people who were there, you know, uh, for, for, for a, a little while in the um, late 70s, early 80s that were just so damn rude to me, and I can't, I can't believe it. You know, I was like, wow, is there a darker side to Jim Henson we don't know about and they don't want to talk about it? You know, because... Oh, you know, no. but, I mean, yeah. Brian Henson was, like, at our kids' birthday parties, and <laughs> because, the people that, that Bruce has worked with, he's been... I'm really fortunate, and it, it, because it's very much like a family, and people, because they were like kids from it's, it's, yeah, it's, he's been really fortunate, and, and he's lovely, so maybe that's part of it, but, wow. Because the, they, because the Canadians, you know, they're very passive aggressive and they're very uh, forgiving and stuff. I'm thinking, you know, maybe that 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 could, you know, been it or something. I don't know, but it's just like God. Why won't they talk to me? It's it's really weird. But yeah, it's weird, isn't it? it? It is, you know. But that that would be great, though, to to talk to him. Yeah. So how do, so how do you know Susan Demanti? So we took an acting class together with um, Megan Foley and Chuck Mara. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I yeah, that's kind of where we met, and we have some mutual friends and. Um, She's really, really fun and talented, and and she's had quite a long, long journey in the career too. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, I like her a lot. Yeah, she, I, I I love her uh, so dearly. You know, I. I did my first interview with her in 2019, and we just hit it off right away. We have Bay Area roots, you know, and I um, always liked uh, her daughter Vanessa as an actress as well, and. Yeah, she's been very good to me. She has connected me with so many uh, great people, and she's tried to she connect. Did, she, did say, she did message me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's great. Just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> <So> yes. <laughs> you know how reluctant I was to do this. Oh, absolutely. No, but you've done really good, you know. I mean, I, I have that ability of, like, you know, bringing up the stuff that I, that I like about the stuff, and then the memories keep... Uh, they they keep you know flooding back as I as I bring them up, so I knew that it was going to turn out great. I'm so glad because honestly, Tommy, sometimes I forget like oh, I, if I even ate breakfast. <laughs> so I'm glad I could remember something and help you out here. Yeah, oh, I'm getting to that point too. Sometimes I forget if I take my diabetic medicine, and I'm like, damn it, did I? Where's my glasses? Oh, I'm wearing them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I I didn't think I was going to be getting it so early, you know. Um, <laughs> The, the memory thing, you know, I just turned 39 last month, not to rub it in. <laughs> I, yeah, right? <laughs> yep. So when you when you heard my interview with Suze, uh, did you uh, uh, hear the part uh, near the end when we played the Secret Silly game? No, I did not. God, for some reason, people never listen to the end when the Secret Silly game comes up. Okay. No, the Secret Silly game, Okay. Okay, this is a series of silly slumber party questions. No win or lose, just pure fun. <laughs> okay. And he, and how it works is I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me that exact same question and I answer it. And feel free to comment on answers because they're going to be pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> okay, Laura, are you ticklish? I I can control my tickle-ishness. 
What about you, Tommy? Are you ticklish? I, I cannot. I um I am ticklish. If you tickle me and it's planned, I love it. But if you tickle me without warning, I will hit you in the groin because I just I have I have a herky jerky reflex, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get that. Like can you tickle yourself and laugh? Can anybody? Oh I can. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your favorite part of the body? And it can be anything. The heart. The heart. It all comes from the heart. And to the heart. And in the heart and out. What is your favorite part of the body? The belly button. Any special reason? Yeah, when I was six years old, I had a girlfriend who had this adorable Audi. And... We, we drifted apart by the time we got to junior high, and she's always been kind of the girl that got away. I tried to reconnect with her on MySpace about 15 years ago, and she's in a, in a loveless marriage, and she's fucked up on drugs, and it's really, really sad for me. And so anytime I see a belly button, I think of her. Are you are are you an innie or an Audi? Any. Same here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what color are your toenails painted? Like a um, kind of like a sparkly mauve color. Nice. What color are your toenails painted? Right now they're not painted, but last time they were, they were purple with sparkles. Sparkles are the thing, aren't they? Yeah, I mean they can they can be pretty messy and get all over the place. And um, after mm-hmm. you try to take them off, you yeah. know it'll take a while. <laughs> you have to get a nail file and just go <laughs> with it. They do last a long time. Yes. <laughs> they do. I like to go elaborate colors. I've been doing that since I was thirteen. That's fun. That's very fun. What would you say is your best personality trait? I think that's really fun. And again, make myself laugh. I can't really tickle myself, but I definitely keep myself up at night laughing. However, other than that, for some reason, people uh, just talk to me like strangers Mm -hmm. and people. And they just, for whatever reason, feel that they can open up and and let go and release and and I know a lot about a lot of people. <laughs> I think, I don't know, but I, I think that's kind of cool that when people need to talk, I guess I have very big ears and uh, <laughs> they see them. You have, you have energy that uh, people are drawn to, yeah, and you are, are very open, I can tell. Well, thank you. So what is your best personality trait? I have empathy and I have no filter. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I I love being funny. You know, coming from stand-up comedy, I love to to just be provocative and shocking, you know? Yes. Yes. And then my favorite question, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? Yes. A. Hard boiled eggs. Oh, the worst. Yeah. God, right? Tuna? Tuna, I can tolerate. Why? Well, that's your thing, but ew. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, there's other fishes that are much worse than that, I think. Like what? Um, oh, God. What? Well, if you go to a deli um, at a supermarket, you'll, you'll, oh. you'll smell a whole flurry of fishes oh, that are yeah. absolutely bad. <laughs> yeah, chopped liver is kind of up on that list, too. Mm-hmm. Lindbergh. <laughs> no, Delta fish? No, thank you. Oh, no. Yeah. No. No, thank you. You can pass that on to the next person and pass over Seder. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really what is your worst smell? It's either farts or feet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when I tell that to people with no kids, you know, they don't know what that is because they're used to it. Yep. Yep. That's great. 
<laughs> I have a joke for you. Okay. What do you call a boy that doesn't masturbate? I do not know. A liar. But I'm bummed. <laughs> you do have no filter, Tommy. But you are also very empathetic, so thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Laura, I think you did, did great today, and I want to thank you so much for coming on and, and having all these fun stories to share, and, you know, that movie, Back to the Beach, uh, touches my heart because it just, it reminds me of a time when things were good in the house, you know, before my family situation dissolved, and I want to thank you for, for coming on and, and, and sharing it with me. Well, thank you for forcing me to do this, for forcing me to say yes. I don't think I was that forceful. <laughs> no, when she said, go, 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 I said, oh, I gotta say yes. So oh. I'm so glad I did. Thank you very much. Of course, yeah. I mean, I, I tell you, I was never good at being a salesman in retail, you know, but I'm a salesman now with my podcast. I don't know how good how how I got good at it, you know, but I guess it's just practice, you know. But... I hope you have a happy 4th of July and a great summer yeah. and be yeah. safe. Yeah. Yes. And have a great day. Thanks so much, Tommy. You too. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Laura Yerstein Lenoil. Ain't she a sweetheart? What a great lady, huh? I'm so glad we could have this conversation. Back to the Beach is such a special movie. I can't say that enough. And I'm so glad... We got to talk about it today, and I think all of you should go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's such an entertaining movie that holds up. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, There's no shame in living in the past, because the present sucks. Later, dudes!